Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd the Show where I talk about how to play games and today we're going to be playing Super Mario Sunshine. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and learned that Shadow Mario is Bowser Jr., the son of Bowser, who made his first appearance in this game. In this episode, we're going to be doing something quite nostalgic if you're a fan of Mario 64. In that game, there's a, there's a point where in order to get to this secret level, you need to go to the very uh, the entrance way of Peach's Castle, and you'll see this shining spotlight. And if you look up into it, you'll go to a secret level. This is pretty much the same thing. Noki Bay Episode One: Uncork the Waterfall. Ah, welcome, Master Mario, I presume? We've heard much about you. Yes, and all of it good. As for me, I'm just an old man who loves nothing but fishing. But lately, I've had a terrible problem. Please, look up there. I don't know who did it, but someone uncorked our waterfall. This, no doubt, is why our lovely bay has become polluted, and I can't even fish, and so I ask for your help. Yank that cork. Please, fulfill this old man's wish. <laughs> What's that? You'll do it? Oh, thank you, thank you so much. I knew I could count on you. Just beware that guy, just beware that guy on the cork. Welcome to Noki Bay, a level that, when I first played through this game, I remember not enjoying all that much for some reason, but replaying through it for this LP, I absolutely loved. And it's very weird because there's another level that we're going to be doing right after Noki Bay that is a level that I remember loving a lot, but then not really. Uh, I didn't really love it after replaying through it. So it's kind of like we had, you know, opposite effect for each one. Uh, I wanted to go through Noki Bay first just because I think it fits thematically a bit more because... Uh, not only was this the one that was hinted at first, but be- Thought I was gonna fall down the whole mountain. Uh, but because this takes place, like, during the middle of the day, and the next one that we'll be going to takes place, like, as the sun is setting, and then the final level has, uh, some missions that take place during nighttime. So I think that, like- I think that thematically it fits, because it's like we're going along with the stages of the day. We came here in the morning, you know, we spent the whole day working hard, and it's, uh, we're getting towards the end of the day. Uh, let's see. Anyways, here's the uh, Monty Mole, same boss as from, uh, I don't even know if this counts as a boss, it's just more of a mini boss, I guess. Uh, but you defeat him the same way you defeated him in Pina Park, which is just grab the bombs, throw it at him. You'll need to do a side flip or some sort of jump before throwing the bomb, because he's a bit higher and a bit more difficult to reach. But still, <coughs> he goes down in three hits just the same. I also love the noise he makes as he flies away. So back in Delfino Plaza, if you look at our shine count right now... I'm just gonna stand still and wait for it to appear. Ugh, oh, frame rate. We have 30 shines! And the reason that that's important, well not really important, but more of just something cool, is because once you have 30 shines, you want to talk to this guy. He's a guy who you'll see appear in a lot of different levels. Uh, I'll list all of the levels he's on. He's in on screen right now. And what happens is when you talk to him once you've gotten 30 shines... I love the sunshine, but oh, is it ever bright. Here, little man, try on a pair of my special sunshades. They're cool. <laughs> You're styling now. Come back and talk to me when you don't need them anymore. So it gives Mario a pair of sunglasses and the screen is slightly darker, which I think is just a little cool little detail. If you come back to him after you've gotten all 120 shines, 
then he will give you a cool jacket to go along with your shades. Uh, unfortunately, these shades don't carry over into levels, and you'll need to talk to him within levels that have him in order to get your shades back. Noki Bay Episode 2, The Boss of Tricky Ruins. Mario, thanks for all your help earlier. That was truly spectacular. Would you mind being my new teacher? I mean, never mind. My grandpa's up ahead and he wants to tell you something. So, that uh, kid right there and the uh, grandpa that we talked to previously and we're going to go ahead and talk to again are actually recurring characters throughout the level, which I'll talk about in a sec, but I actually really like... Uh, and it kind of allowed me to become more attached to the story of this world than I had any of the previous ones. Excellent! Way to go, Master Mario! You've returned our waterfall to normal! Bravo! What's that? The ocean's still dirty? Strange. Looks like my theory was way off. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's okay. I think I've got a lead on the real cause. Now, this may seem not seem like much of a reward, but I'm going to reveal to you one of Nogi Bay's deepest secrets. This bay actually contains the tomb of an ancient Noki king. When you spray water on the wall paintings, a path usually opens. It's all it's almost like magic, and one path leads to a hidden shine sprite. Honest, this is all true, maybe. <laughs> uh but yeah, so this is all about going across the level and spraying the the those uh things that you saw earlier. Uh any when you spray them with water, new paths appear, like you said. Uh but anyways. Having very few characters in a level like with Noki Bay actually allowed for me to connect with the story of this one a lot more. Uh, by the way, you want to spin jump and then hover nozzle right here. But I was allowed to connect with the uh, story a lot more here because A, there are only a few characters, which is just the grandson, the grandpa, and that like Tanuki. Uh, character down there who I think is selling boats uh, but it gave me an actual reason to talk to them over and over again because it felt like we were characters who were going after the same goal which isn't something that I really felt and it also this level feels like it's telling a full story like with other levels uh, with other worlds most of the missions you could swap out with each other uh, you could swap the order around, and it would still make sense. Uh, but for this world, I felt like, you know, first we try to uncork the waterfall, that doesn't work, and our next plan is to go up here and fight what, what's atop here. Speaking of which, our next boss fight is Gooper Blooper, making his return from Rico Harbor. He's fought in pretty much the same way, just... Jump on his tentacles, grab his face, and he's done. We have some bloopers here who will make your job a bit more difficult, uh, but one thing that they did do is they made him a bit easier than he, than in his uh, second Rico Harbor fight, because you have to pull his face a lot less than you did during that fight. Did he just phase into the hills there? I don't know. Now we make our way down into the ruins, and we get, you know, we have this cool view right here from the caves, which I like. Anyways, that's shine number 31. Noki Bay episode 3, Red Coins in a Bottle.
I've got it. Yes, I surely do have it. What have I got? Why, the answer to our polluted ocean problem, of course. If the answer is you, you must go to the ocean floor. Of course, that is impossible for you at the moment. Therefore, I've made an area for you to hone your skills. boop pop boop da dip 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 da Here, wear this, and you can stay underwater for much longer. Use that flood to move around and get red coins. But don't overdo it if you run low on air, here's what you do. Just grab some regular coins to refill, refill your meter, okay? Now shall we get started? So this entire level takes place in this uh, bottle right here. And the old man has placed red coins for us to collect. So we either succeed uh, this mission and, you know, we're proved we're capable of helping out the waterfall, or we die. <laughs> either one. So, let's make sure we don't... Death doesn't seem like a very tantalizing option right now, so let's just move around and collect these red coins. That one gust of air... That one area right over here with the uh, gust of wind lifting me up. Uh, the physics can be a bit finicky for collecting the two red coins there, so I like to get that out of the way first. Then just collect the different ones floating around, and then there are, I believe, three on the ground here? Or maybe two, and I'm just missing one up in the air. Or not air, you know, up higher in the water. Ah, uh, yeah, there's one red coin way up there. I find that a lot of these, uh, missions are fun. Oh, whoop. I accidentally hit something with my foot under my desk, and I thought I, like, turned off my computer or something, but no. Thankfully, I don't think it was anything important. I find that a lot of the ideas of these, uh, shines are really cool. It's just that sometimes the physics can be very wonky and make them less fun than they should be. Noki Bay, Episode 4, Ely Mouth's Dentist. Oh, Mario, you're finally s s setting out. Oh, Mario, you're finally setting out for the ocean's bottom. Grandpa's waiting for you up top. Oh, don't forget to wear this. You can use this rope as a shortcut to reach Grandpa. Sweet. This is the only level that I remember really, like, heavily disliking when I first played it. Uh, but replaying it, I found it, you know, it was alright. I think it created a, I think this level creates a good bit of tension with the sort of boss fight that we're going to be doing right here. Uh, one thing that I know is just uh, saying that the physics can be not that great and cause a bit of some issues, but I love doing different flips and jumps and messing around with Flood and just seeing how I can get to different areas in a bunch of different ways. Whenever a, a game makes me really love how it controls and how it d how and makes me like go out of my way to just do stuff off on my own and sort of kind of goof off just to play around with the physics. I think that's a mark, in my eyes, at least in my opinion, of a really good game. It looked like you were ready. The gunk in the ocean is caused by a giant eel. It's moved into our ancestral home at the seafloor, and it's nursing some nasty cavities there. Let's take a look. The newly uncorked waterfall created a gap in the pollution. What you could use is the entrance. Jump it right in there. Dive into the bottom of the ocean and clean up the eel's teeth. Doing so will ease his pain and he'll return from whence he came. No doubt about it. Now gather your courage and dive. This is a really cool section. You're at the very top of the level. And you want to jump all the way to the bottom. Alright, so this boss fight starts off very slow, and by that I mean you have to watch as you slowly float down to the very bottom. 
Because you can't really do anything in the boss fight until you... Uh, until you've made it far down enough for the boss to actually start reacting to your movements. Uh, so I'd suggest going off to the side here real quick and grabbing these coins. You begin floating down once more and they will begin to rise, so make sure you have your hover nozzle out. And then once they show your their teeth, switch over to normal flood and begin spraying. They'll float back down again. And you just want to keep resurfacing, or not really resurfacing, but go up a decent amount and then float back down and begin spraying its teeth again. One thing you should look out for is sometimes you can get swallowed by the eel creature when it does that uh, sort of attack, or just normally I'm pretty sure. I think if you float down uh, far enough then it'll actually eat you. I don't think you instantly die though, you just take a good bit of damage. Uh, there's always, off to the side, there's always coins for you to grab, so be sure to make a lot of use of those because when you're underwater you start slowly losing health, and of course once you get to zero, you die. Okay, I think there's... Okay, there's three teeth left that I'm going after. Come on, rise back up. Uh, that cliff part where you jump off the cliff into this area, that reminds me of... I'm playing through Xenobla Xenobla Xenoblade Chronicles on my own right now, and there's this part in the first chapter where you get put on top of this like huge cliff and they give you a checkpoint, and you're like, huh, I wonder if I can jump off from this point. And I tried to jump off, and it actually worked. And I thought that was super cool. Because in a normal game, there will just be like an invisible wall there. I am loving playing through that game right now. I'm on chapter 3, and still I'm having a just, just a great time with it so far. Oh crap, I'm very low on health right now. On. Oh, thank God. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna also wrap around here and get these coins. So now I'm completely filled up, and I think there's only one tooth left to go. Come on. There we go. Remember to take proper care of your teeth. That's right. Kids at home, this is an official Game Nerd PSA. Brush your teeth. So now all we have left to do is just slowly make our way down to the bottom. I think we have infinite health now, because that would suck if we went through that entire boss fight and... Wait, no, we don't. I wonder what that pink stuff was then. Because when we had full health, our life was pink for some reason. I don't know. Anyway, shine number 33. Noki Bay Episode 5, Il Piantissimo Surf Swim. Yes, Il Piantissimo makes a reappearance. Also, because I forgot to mention this previously, he is the... When you take the mask off of his model, uh, he is the running man from The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time and the uh, postman from The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Now hopefully all of our people will return home again. We owe it all to you. Thanks, and say, do you know that guy? He's been waiting up there for you quite a while. So now we have completely solved the issue of the poisonous water. Thanks to you, our bay is clean again. Thank you. So that's nice. We got a, bu a bunch of resolution there. Th 
Ho ho, foolish man. I am Il Piantissimo. Yes, that is me. And now I challenge you to a race to that flag. If I ever do a Let's Play of Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask, I'll make sure to give the running man the same voice. It is a race to the finish. The best time is 40 seconds. Are you at the ready? Then get set and go! So yeah, now we have 40 seconds to beat him, or I think a little bit less. I didn't know that punching thing was there. That gave us a good bit of distance. You mainly want to use the platforms and jump across those, because water movement can be pretty slow. Anyways, in 18 seconds, we finished it. Whew. <sighs> you are quite speedy. You are like a fish. You may not be the slow clam jumper I took you for. May we race again. Watch for me. Noki Bay Episode 6, The Shell's Secret. Yes indeed, another secret mission. I forget which one this was, it though. Master Mario, you've become tied to our destiny, I'm afraid. A pathway to another world has opened above our fair land. Surely you will go there. Of course, you must go there. I apologize for involving you in all this. Good luck. We'll cheer you on from here. Farewell. Alrighty. So this is the last uh, mission before Shadow Mario, so it does have a good sense of finality to it. You'll have to use the ropes to climb up there, I'm afraid. I remember in my original recording, uh, as I kept doing that, uh, that nerd's voice, I started sounding more and more like Papyrus from Undertale. Like, it started like this, but, like, Papyrus is, like, one of the two nasally voices I can do, so it eventually just evolved into, like, much more of this, and, you know, a bit more extra, and what's the word I'm looking for? I, I forget the word, but... Extravagant! That's the word I was looking for! So yeah, the more and more I did that voice, it sounded less and less that like what I was going for in the first place. Anyways, secret mission. Which one are you? Oh, okay, I think I remember doing a pretty good job on this level uh, before. Yeah, this and... This is like one of the first things that I think of when I think of the secret missions from Mario Sunshine. Alongside, uh... What was it? The, uh, egg one from Peanut Park. I cannot believe I saved myself. I completely messed that up and deserved to die. But... What do you know? I actually did pretty good. I'm gonna see if I could go through this entire thing without dying. But now that I said that, I probably completely jinxed it, and... I'm probably gonna mess up at an incredibly easy spot. This is a level that demands a lot more from you than previously. Makes you do many more dangerous jumps. I didn't even know I could do th that. What was that? Mario did like a weird... Like, he tried to slide off of this wall right here, but then he tried to slide off of this right here, and so he just sort of went backwards. I don't know what that was. Okay, this is probably the part where I'm going to mess up, so I'm just going to kind of completely go silent and try to not really focus, but sort of just get in the zone and... Try to not mess up.
And there we go. Shine number 35. Noki Bay Episode 7. Hold it, Shadow Mario! Is that a relative of yours? Quite an odd family you've got. You ever have a phrase in a video game that, um, you know, you hear a lot in relation to that video game, and now whenever you hear that phrase used in normal context, you can't help but think of the video game? I know the experience everyone has is with Among Us, unfortunately, but, uh, when I hear Hold It, I just think of Phoenix Wright, so... I'm super excited for uh, the Apollo Justice Trilogy Collection because uh, I remember not really enjoying uh, those games, or I can't really say that I didn't enjoy them because I don't think I fully experienced one or two of them because I did finish Apollo Justice and I didn't enjoy it that much, but a lot of people say it's their favorite. Kara says, I won't forget this. A lot of people say it's, it's one of their favorites, so I'm going to go back and give it a second shot. Uh, I didn't finish Dual Destinies, but I, I watched like a Let's Play of it, and I don't think I finished Spirit of Justice. So I'm super excited for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and head on over and actually finally deal with Shadow Mario in the plaza over there. My god, the frame rate. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye